Hello and welcome to Kitty Talks Dogs. Today we have with us Stan and Stan is a very big Labradoodle. Stan is a very large dog and we are very lucky because Stan's owners doesn't want the coat to be short. So we are going to scissor Stan and make him as natural as possible today. If you are wondering which products are being used in this video, all the products are listed down below. Nowadays, many breeders use the poodle to cross them with all kinds of breeds. And why do they do that? Because the poodle, first of all, has a perfect temperament and it doesn't molt. But, quick tip, if you have a poodle and you prefer to have a labradoodle, just let the poodle's hair grow. The trick is to groom naturally. No extra angulation, just let the paws grow in barefoot and just make it natural in all places just as long. Another trick is to keep the labradoodle mat free and that's the difficult part. Let's do some dematting. The labradoodle, because he's been mixed with other breeds, has a more difficult coat than the poodle coat. It has double layers and it's got wool in there and it's very easy to mat. So the labradoodle needs much more attention, brushing and combing and washing than the normal poodle. I advise you to wash your labradoodle every week especially when he's easily matted. Uh, I advise you to do that because when you wash your Labradoodle, you can use conditioner and the conditioner will definitely prevent the mats. Here on this drawing, you see a hair and you see the cuticle stand open. And if you have many hairs next to each other, if the cuticles are dry and are open, they get tangled in each other and you will have mats. The conditioner, or actually the oils in the conditioner, will close the cuticle and when all the cuticles are closed, you will brush very easily and the hairs will not tangle in each other and you won't have any more mats. You will see after a few days, like four or five days, the hair will become dry again and that's where it's going to be again easy to tangle. So after a week, it's advisable to wash again, put again conditioner on and start all over again. Let's do some clipping. Here you see me using the Heinegger style midi and I'm just going to scoop all the hair in between the pads away. It's very easy. As you can see, I'm first just going over everything to make it neat and then I'm just taking the two outside fingers and put, not actually pulling very much but just holding them turning around and then in this position you can easily take out all the hairs in between the pads and I'm just going to the top of the pad drawing a line between where the pad starts and then Afterwards, when I'm scissoring, when I have a nice line there, it's very easy to take the top of the scissor and just scissoring a nice round foot. On the style midi, I'm using the shortest setting. That's between a half a millimeter and one millimeter long. Let's do some ear cleaning. I'm first using the Showtech ear powder. When you have dogs with a lot of hair and the air can't get in contact with the inside of the ear, you risk having infections. So me, I like also around the ear to take as much as possible hair away. It's uh, nice and airy then, and it's also nice and clean. As you can see here, it's very easy to do with the powder. And Stan, the Labradoodle, is such a good boy, he's letting me do this. Mini dogs don't like it, but Stan has no problem with it. I'm using the Showtech Ear Care. 
I'm just pouring the show tech ear care in. I'm giving it a small massage. And after the massage, I'm using the big Q-tips for cleaning out all the wax and all the dirt. And for finishing, as you can see here, I'm using the ear wipes. I'm going around, I'm taking it around my finger and also a little bit in the inside. So now the ears smell very good and they are squeaky clean. Let's do some nail clipping. I really like to have all my material very close to me, especially the stop bleed powder. If I have an accident, I take my little piece of paper, put it against the nail, and then immediately use the stop bleed. Today I'm using the Showtech guillotine. The advantage of the guillotine is you can really cut small parts of the nail in a little bit at the time. When you have black nails and you are doubting where to cut, use the guillotine and you can millimeter by millimeter go closer and closer. Of course, this is only if the dog lets you. The nail grinder is super easy to use. And then when you are clipping the nails, you can put your thumb on the paw like a pivot and just go around the nails so all the hard points or the hard corners are gone and it's super easy to go shorter. Let's do some bathing. It's only now you see how big Stan is. Stan is really large, he's like a pony. Because Stan is so big, we will change totally our system and wash Stan twice on his right side and then turn him around and wash him twice on his left side. The first shampoo is going to be the Hydra Extreme. The Hydra Extreme shampoo is a very concentrated shampoo, perfect for pre-washing will dissolve all the debris, will dissolve all the buildup, and it's very good for volume. As you can see, we're not only washing the coat, we have a very firm grip, and we are also making sure the skin has a very good wash. For the second wash, we decided to use the Shocka Doodle Stand Proud shampoo. This is the only special shampoo we have for Labradoodles. This is a very special shampoo for these difficult, delicate coats. It will help you to give you some volume, not too much, and it's going to help you to dry fast. It's just a very good shampoo. And guess what? It smells of chocolate. Now the right side is finished, and now you see us washing his left side. First time with the Hydra Extreme, and the second time with the Shoka Doodle Shampoo. You don't see us using conditioner because we are using the Shoka Doodle Comb Through Spray, which is just like a conditioner and you can use it on wet or dry hair. And here you see us rinsing thoroughly and repeating and pushing all the shampoo out of the coat. Let's do some drying. Here you see us using the K9 dryer. The K9 dryer is a very strong dryer, perfect for the kind of coat that Stan has. In the bath, we blow away most of the water out of the coat. And when most of the water is gone, we are going to put Stan on the table again. Let's do some brushing. When most of the water is disappeared, now Stan needs to go to the table and now with the warm air and the slicker brushes, we will brush until all the curls and all the mats are gone. Here, because Stan is such a big dog, you see us working with two people on Stan and Kitty Ponet is helping me. I'm using the Rumex Zeppelin dryer and Kitty Ponet is using the Rapid Cyclona dryer. The difference is the Rapid Cyclona dryer is made totally in metal. It's a very 
heavy dryer, it's more expensive, the nozzle is thicker and the air volume is a little bit higher than the Zeppelin. The Grumex Zeppelin dryer is a very versatile dryer because it's very easy to switch him from stand dryer to blaster. I'm using the Russian slicker here. The Russian slicker has very long teeth and a very good angulation and here I'm using the Tangle Teaser. I have a very sensitive back. For me, it's very easy to use the Yento Tangle Teaser because he's so light. We are just going over the coat and making sure the warm air from the dryers and the slicker brush is together. So we are actually drying where the coat goes open and we are pulling out all the curls and all what is still in the way to have a good finish with our scissors we have to make sure the coat is totally curl free and matte free i am going to use our fanatic scissor line we have fanatic scissors in curved we have the junkers we have the straight ones and i can't wait to use them i'm also going to use the Cobra Chunkers. Here for the feet you see me using the Sparkle 6.5 inch, the curved one, because the feet are curved anyway, this makes it much easier. As you can see, I've done my clipper work perfectly and now I only have to like follow the pads and I will have a perfect round foot. I'm not going to go upwards but I'm just putting my scissor as flat as possible to go round the foot. For me, it's very important to see the pads. So when the dog is walking and he's like twisting his pads or turning his pads towards you, if you can see those black pads, I think that's very beautiful. And here you see me using the Utsumi carbon comb. And as you can see, I'm starting to lift the hairs and after I've lifted the hairs, I'm going over the coat with the scissors. I'm using the Yento Cobra Chunkers. If you like this kind of natural grooming, I would advise to repeat every six weeks. The hair won't ever come very, very long. And every time the dog is scissored, you take about uh, a two centimeters hair off. By lifting the legs, the hair, the hair will fall naturally down and it's going to make it easier to catch the hairs that need scissoring. And here it's just repeating. I'm lifting up the hairs with my comb and I'm actually scissoring on my comb. And here I'm at the shoulders and I'm also with my comb lifting and scissoring and lifting and scissoring and lifting and scissoring. Here it's slow motion and as you can see I'm lifting and combing again. The reason I start in the front is because for me the, the biggest job is getting the front in balance. So the shoulders and the you know the front legs and, and the chest and the whole you know, body. I prefer to start at the most difficult part the part where there's the most work and then I can see where the dog starts like when I do the chest and then I go backwards. I usually first do the front legs, the head and then I go backwards. If it's not working by lifting the coat with your scissor and scissoring on the comb, you can just try to lift the coat and scissor and lift the coat again. And here Stan is sitting down to make the chest uh, and here you see me using the quick fix spray. Because I've used the spray I can see more the points. They are a little bit darker and because now it's a bit humid it will stay better upwards and it's going to make my job easier for scissoring. Here you see me lifting his front leg and you see very nice the connection from the chest to the tummy. When the dog is sitting down and you can just go very downwards scissoring and then later when he's standing up again when you lift the front leg you can easily go 
from the chest to the tummy in one line. And the places where you cannot reach very well to lift and scissor on top of the comb, you just lift the hair and go against the direction of the hair growth with the chunkers. And here now you see me lifting his left front leg and just following the natural curve of the dog's body. Here you see me just looking for the line at the feet and it's very easy. I'm using the curved scissors and when you've done your clipper work perfectly, it's very easy to have a nice round foot. I'm quickly finishing his back legs as well, his feet, because we suspect Stan needs to go out very soon and it's pouring rain down. So we don't want to have four wet legs or wet feet and we certainly don't want to scissor wet legs so that's why we're quickly finishing the legs, the feet. Once we have the bottom part done it's only a matter of following the natural rounding of the feet, not holding the scissor to vertical, just trying to hold it horizontal and following the rounding. And now I'm switching to the chunker and lifting the hairs and scissoring and repeat. Let's finish Stan's head. Not to have all the hairs in the same size and the same length. We are like lifting also the beard and taking off a little bit hair. As you can see, I did that with my fingers. That's just something I like to do very much. I lift it with my fingers and then the hair which is falling into my scissors, I'm scissoring. The only thing you need to be very careful in the beginning you do that, you don't scissor your fingers. I've never done it, but I've seen people scissoring with the scissors in their fingers. So you just have to be a bit careful. Also the hair from the ears, I'm just lifting and scissoring and lifting. And here I'm taking the two ears with a band, with a rubber band. But before I leave the rubber band on the ears, I always take a comb and I put it in between the ear and the rubber band to see if the rubber band is not accidentally on the skin from the ears. That would cause very much pain. If you leave that on too long, it can cause problems with the dog's ears. Now I'm just combing the coat in all different directions and scissoring and nearly like in the wind I'm pretending the wind is going over there and going over there and everything which is like too much I'm scissoring. I have switched the Heinegger midi clipper to the longest setting and here you see me clipping his genitals. Making sure the ears are the same length when the dog puts his head down it's very easy you can see the length of the nose and then when he puts the ears down you can use the nose as the point and see that the hair on both sides of the nose is the same length. It's a little trick. Grabbing all the hair from the other side of the spine on my side to easily be scissored and then on the other side I'll do the same thing the other way and that way I will have a very nice finish also on Stan's back. You see me lifting and scissoring and lifting and scissoring until everything is natural and just as long. And the trick is when you are lifting the comb you have to remember like you are lifting the comb for example six centimeters away from the skin and every time you scissor, you have to keep your comb six centimeters away from the skin before you start scissoring. And that's the most difficult part. And if you do that, you will have a nice finished overall. Here at the tuck up, I'm not scissoring like six centimeters because there I want to see the leg, I want to see the, a little bit the tuck up and the tummy needs to be for me a little shorter because that way when he's running outside he won't be so dirty and wet and it's going to be easier for maintenance. And here you see me clipping the tail. I have the end of the tail between my two fingers and I've just 
taken all the hair away and now I'm just going to make it natural again with the chunker scissors. So when the end is all natural, I go on the other side of the tail where I always start short at the anus and I make sure there's no long hair as well on that side because for me, when a dog goes to the toilet, I don't want the hair to stick in anything or to be in the way. So at the back end, I like it neat. I like it a little short. It doesn't need to be very short. It needs to be still natural, but I like the hair not to be too long there. Also, then you see how long the dog is. Here, I'm just following the dog's natural angulation. I'm not like overdoing it like we do with poodles. So we just keep it as natural as possible. And there at the bottom, I like to have a curve downwards. I also don't want like a corner or anything or see where the tail starts. I, I like it natural, but still like in a nice curve. So you see his bum and then you see his back leg. And also at the back of the tail, I want it short. So here you see me lifting up the tail and like the back, making it short. Here you see the tail is like not with any corners. I'm going from short to long. And here as well on the side of the leg, like pulling the hair up and scissoring and pulling the hair up and repeat. So here you see Happy Stan because he knows he's finished. To have a happy Labradoodle, just give him as much attention you can and don't forget to maintain his hair, wash frequently and go to the groomer as much as possible. And here you see some more pictures from before and after from Stan the Labradoodle. This was Kitty for Transgroom TV. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to write them down below. Please give the video a thumbs up if you like it. And see you in next episode from Kitty Talks Dogs.